We're back on Politics Nation with a game of name that instrument. Can you guess what it is? If you guess steel drums, you're right. The music of the islands, the music of places like Bermuda. Ah, what a beautiful island. It's known for its breathtaking white sand beaches and Bermuda shorts. Lots of Bermuda shorts in a variety of colors. Who hasn't heard of the Bermuda Triangle? Movies have been made about the ships and planes that mysteriously vanished there over the years. Mmm. Turns out there's something else that's mysteriously vanished. The details surrounding a Bermuda company listed under Romney's name. We don't know what he's hiding. In fact, neither does he. Don't manage them. Don't even know where they are. Those That trustee uh, follows all U.S. laws. All the taxes are paid as appropriate. All of them have been reported to the government. Uh, there's nothing hidden there. Nothing hidden. Nothing hidden. Folks, think about this. Isn't it weird he doesn't know about a company he owns in Bermuda? People, people, don't most people know where their money is? And it only gets more confusing from there. An AP uh, report that Bermuda company he owns is among several Romney holdings that has not been fully disclosed. Mitch set it up in 1997 while working at Bain Capital. It was used, among other things, in Bain's billion-dollar takeover of Domino Pizza. Later, it was transferred into a blind trust owned by Romney's wife one day before he was sworn in as governor. Huh. Sure doesn't look like Romney doesn't know anything about that company. But the fact remains, he owns a Bermuda company. Did you ever think we'd have a presidential candidate who owns a Bermuda company? But we do. Only he doesn't know anything about it. The sort of secrecy is weird. It's exactly what Vice President Biden was talking about today when he hit Mr. Romney for not releasing his tax returns. When his father was a candidate for president in 1968, his father released 12 years of tax returns because he said, and I quote, one year could be a fluke, perhaps done for show, end of quote. That was his father. His son has released only one year of his tax returns. He wants you to show your papers, but he won't show us his. It's kind of fascinating. He won't show us his papers. Well, maybe because he doesn't know where they are. I don't manage them. Don't even know where they are. Joining me now is Rebecca Wilkins, senior counsel at Citizens for Tax Justice and Benji Sarlin, political reporter for Talking Points Memo, who's been covering the story closely for TPM. Uh, Thanks to both of you for joining me tonight. Thanks for having us. Rebecca, uh, let me start with you. Please explain something to me. Romney's Bermuda company is listed as a company, but it doesn't have any employees. And Romney doesn't know anything about it. Can you explain that to me? Well, I don't think it's possible that he doesn't know anything about it because it was set up before it was transferred to the blind trust. Um, It was set up um, back in the 90s. Um, He was shown as the sole owner, and then it was transferred to the trust. On top of that, the trustee of the trust is um, a longtime advisor and Romney's personal attorney. All right, but but wait a minute. It was set up in the 90s, 97, by Romney. Right. So he knew about it in the 90s. It was transferred to a blind trust that is uh, controlled by his personal lawyer, yet he doesn't know anything about it now. Yeah, that doesn't seem very plausible, does it? Uh, no. Benji, let me go to you. Uh, when we look at the AP uh, Vanity Fair uh, story, we find out the, the company, uh, San Katie, was set up by Romney in 97. It was placed in a blind trust to Bradford Malt. Then uh, we find out that uh, Malt doesn't seem to be investing too blindly because Vanity Fair uh, points out the following, quote, it's certainly true that Malt, under Malt, 
the trusts don't appear to be as blind as they might be. For instance, in 2010, the Romneys invested $10 million in the startup of a fund co-founded by their eldest son, Tag, and Spencer Twick, Romney's one-time campaign fundraiser. So it seems like this blind uh, trust can see some things. Right. There's been a lot of debate over just how blind this trust is. Uh, it doesn't actually fit the uh, federal guidelines for uh, how a blind trust should work. Uh, to, for starters, it's run by, uh, as mentioned, one of Romney's own close personal aides and a friend. And it's a uh, so it's not exactly that much distance between him and this money. There's some evidence that he has some influence over it. But the biggest thing is that there's just no way to clear this up without releasing significantly more records. Uh, it's all very mysterious right now. There's a lot of uh, smoke. Uh, Mitt Romney says nothing. There was no taxes avoid avoided. There was no uh, illegal use of this at all. And, you know, Probably that's true. He's been a very careful guy his whole life. But there just isn't any way to know as long as he doesn't release any tax records and uh, release any further information on it. Yeah, but, but, but Rebecca, I think what is, what is not careful, if you know you're running for president, you've been dreaming uh, of this for years, running for years, you own a company in Bermuda, and then you won't even uh, answer questions or be transparent. I mean... There's something strange. The company's only worth $10,000. I mean, the AP reports, a financial snapshot of uh, San Katie, uh, in Romney's 2010 tax return showed the holding with almost no value at that time with $10,000 in both assets and liabilities. So why well, would he be so scared about releasing information on this if it's only worth $10,000? Well, that's the value that's reported in the income tax returns, but that doesn't mean that millions or tens of millions of dollars hasn't run through the corporation. Tens um, of it, millions? It's possible. It's just that at the time the return was prepared at the date of the reporting date, it didn't have anything in it. But it doesn't mean that, there ha that it hasn't been used to invest in other things and, and to... Um, so, so why would he open it then if, he, if there are no assets for tax purposes, just run a lot of money through it? Well, why does anybody open an uh, entity in a tax haven? Um, it's because they want to avoid the rules and regulations that would apply to them onshore. And the primary one of those is tax evasion. And you know, what bothers me more than um, Romney having a Bermuda corporation is the fact that when he was head of Bank Capital, Bank Capital started um, forming all of its private equity funds in the Cayman Islands. And he made that decision on behalf of Bank Capital. So even if he and his partners at Bain aren't using those entities to evade tax, they make it really easy for their investors to evade tax. That's facilitating tax evasion. I find it shocking that he thinks that's okay. So the reason that you go to the Cayman Islands and Bermuda and the reason that uh, some of the clients, if not Bain itself, is actually to deal with tax havens and avoid taxes here in the United States, where are you running for president? Right, here in the United States or around the world. You know, the funds probably have investors from all over the world, from the United Kingdom or France or the United States. And that Cayman Islands entity doesn't have any filing requirements anywhere. So it doesn't have to tell any tax authority anywhere in the world who its investors are or how much income they got from that investment. So now, if you now, want to cheat on your taxes, it makes it really easy. Now, Benji, uh, let's deal with the policies of this. In, in, in a debate... Uh, this year, the real reason might have slipped uh, when uh, Romney was in the midst of a debate. Uh, listen to this. Why not should the people of South Carolina, before this election, see last year's return? Uh, because I want to make sure that I beat President Obama. And every time we release things drip by drip, the Democrats go out with another array of attacks. So... Uh, the Democrats go out with another array of attacks, so that's why you're not going to be transparent while you ask people to vote for you to be president of the United States. Benji. Well, well, he's right about one thing. The Democrats are coming out with plenty of attacks, but a lot of the attacks are saying, well, look, why don't you just release these records already then? And if you remember from that debate, 
that didn't work out very well for Mitt Romney. Uh, he got booed, and then he was forced to immediately capitulate and release at least a couple of years or only one full year of his taxes, which is how we first discovered this Bermuda company was still an asset in the first place. It was unknown for about a decade that he even still owned this thing. So uh, it's difficult to see how things aren't heading the same way right now. Uh, Democrats have really succeeded in highlighting a lot of these questions and issues that I think a lot of independent analysts confirm are legitimate and serious and probably do merit quite a bit more documentation from Mitt Romney. Now, Rebecca, uh, there is clearly the investments and, and business done by Bain under uh, Willard Mitt Romney in the Cayman Islands and, and Bermuda. What is the Cayman Islands sandwich? Well, it's a very sophisticated tax planning technique that involves avoiding withholding taxes around the world and avoiding reporting requirements around the world by um, using Cayman Islands entities um, in between all of the investments that you're doing. Mm. Rebecca Wilkins and Benji Silent, thanks for your time this evening. Thanks you for bet. having me. Ahead, Speaker Boehner's back in Washington working hard on, of course, I'm kidding. He's trying to repeal the health care law again. Congressman Keith Ellison joins us. Stay with us.